lesson of this weekend's March for Our Lives, it's that ending violence in America is easy, so easy that even children know how to do it. All that stands between the broken, chaotic country we live in and the peaceful utopia of the future is a very small group of very evil people, mostly Republicans. As Parkland student David Hogg noted the other day, there are some, quote, sick effers out there who want to sell more guns, murder more children, and honestly, just get reelected. Well, on the stage on Saturday, his classmate Alex Wind agreed with this. Quote, if you take money from the NRA, Wind told the crowd, you have chosen death. So it's all pretty straightforward. If the NRA wasn't so blindly committed to killing children, if they didn't enjoy murder for its own sake, we wouldn't have school shootings in the first place. It's that simple. Speakers of the March told us that repeatedly, and the media dutifully amplified that message and formed a protective ring around the activists. As Politico reporter Ben White put it, quote, the sickening efforts to slime, undermine, defame, and dehumanize these young people betrays an enormous amount of fear. In other words, shut up, America. Don't ask questions. The kids know what they're doing. But do they know what they're doing? This weekend, Vox.com ran a story with this title, I've covered gun violence for years. The solutions aren't a big mystery. The piece was written by someone called German Lopez, whom Fox.com identified as, quote, a senior reporter. Lopez graduated with a journalism degree from the University of Cincinnati in 2012. He's still in his 20s. I've covered gun violence for years may be an overstatement. Nevertheless, Lopez approached this subject with all the self-confidence of an eminent research scientist wading in data. What America likely needs, Lopez concluded, is something more like Australia's mandatory buyback program, essentially a gun confiscation scheme paired with a serious ban on specific firearms, potentially including all semi-automatic weapons. All semi-automatic weapons? Hmm. There are more than 100 million of those in the United States right now, and the overwhelming majority of them are sitting in the bedroom closets of law-abiding Americans who've done nothing wrong and don't have plans to do anything wrong. So how exactly would we confiscate all those guns? Somebody would have to go door-to-door -to, -door to take them by force, arresting anyone who resists. In the name of ending gun violence, people would be shot to death. There's no question about that. So who exactly is going to do it? Local police, the FBI, Delta Force? German Lopez of Vox did not volunteer for that job himself. Instead, he blamed the NRA for blocking the whole idea. Quote, the Supreme Court and U.S. lawmakers, backed by the powerful gun lobby, particularly the NRA, widely agree that the Second Amendment does put barriers on how far restrictions can go. Hmm, wait, we've got news here. The Supreme Court, according to Vox, is also in the pocket of the NRA. Is there evidence of that? Which justices are taking gun money exactly? Or is Vox just throwing out that claim because all decent people who live in big cities already know the NRA is evil, so why get hung up on details? This is the problem with letting children write news stories. The articles tend to be dumb, and intentionally or not, they tend to be inaccurate and dishonest. Worst of all, they tend to reinforce the fantasy that complex problems have simple solutions because that's what most children believe. In real life, nothing is simple. We don't really know why the incidence of school shootings has risen, even as the proportion of households with firearms has dropped. We ought to do our best to find out. The self-righteous kids screaming at you on television over the weekend aren't helping at all. Erica Thomas is a Georgia State representative and an advocate of gun control, and she joins us tonight. Representative Thomas, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Tucker. So what do you think would happen if we tried to confiscate uh, so-called assault weapons from law-abiding Americans? How would people respond? Well, I think, it's, uh, yes, it's about how people will respond, but let's look at what happened back in 1994 when we had a ban on assault rifles. When mass shootings went down by 43 percent. That is what we want to happen. We want mass shootings to go down, and I think that's the most important point in this matter. But didn't Columbine take place during the assault weapons ban, and didn't the overall death by gun, the homicide rate with firearms, remain unchanged? 
Oh, no. I mean, I, you're right. You're totally right about the Columbine situation. But you know what? 43% does not account for all. I said 43% went down. And think no, about no, 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 but I don't, just as a factual matter, the, the, the Clinton Justice Department was required by the law to study its effects. And so we have a mm -hmm. conclusive uh, answer to this question. And the, the death rate by firearms did not decline over that 10 year period. So statistically, no lives were saved. I mean, that's the conclusion of the DOJ. Doesn't that give you pause? No, it doesn't give me pause. When I think about in 2004, when Congress lifted that ban and mass uh -huh. shootings went up by over 200 percent. So those are the numbers. We're talking about the numbers. Those are the numbers. Mass shootings went up. So, yeah, you're, you, you might be right about numbers, but when we talk about numbers, it went up. Those are the numbers. Yeah, the, but the murder rate didn't, didn't move at all. But what do you think would happen? So, okay, those are the numbers. What do you think would happen if law enforcement pushed by Democratic politicians tried to take the guns from law-abiding Americans? What do you think the effect would be? Well, you know, I'm not talking about taking guns from law bodies. I'm talking about a ban on assault rifles. We are not trying to promote a militia. What war are we going at that we need assault rifles? Yes, okay, protect but, the citizens, well, may, protect may your I, second I'm amendment sorry, rights, I, but not okay. assault rifles. I, I mean, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to argue with you, but here's the legislation that you supported in Georgia. Uh, the, the last assault weapons ban Democrats in your state push, and I'm quoting mm -hmm. from the legislation right here. The yeah. Georgia Bureau of Investigations shall seize and take possession, possession of any assault weapon, large capacity magazine, armor piercer bullet, or incendiary 50 caliber bullet. Shall seize and take possession of. That's not voluntary, that's mandatory. So you've got hundreds of thousands of people in your state who own weapons that you say are assault weapons. Are you worried that someone might get killed if law enforcement comes, you've done nothing wrong, and so we're, we're taking your gun away, whether you like it or not? What do you think would happen? I mean, it's worth thinking that through since you're supporting a law that would call for it, don't you think? You know, what I'm worried about is when the Constitution was made and when the Second Amendment was made, it stated that, of course, the Second, uh, Second Amendment, but let's talk about when it was made. That was when assault rifles, you had to take several minutes to reload an assault rifle. And no, no, now I'm, it's uh, several seconds. So let's review right. that law. Technology is very different. No, I, I agree. It, but let's review that law again. Okay, but I, you keep dodging my question, and, and most people do, but I think it's important because we're getting to a point where actual legislation has been sponsored and will be again saying that the government needs to take people's weapons by force and if you really care about preventing deaths I wonder if you're concerned even a little bit that there might be a violent reaction to that is that a crazy thing oh, to suggest you know you know what it's not a crazy thing Tucker you're totally correct by force is not what we want to do that's but what the I, law me, says hold no, on that's I the totally law that you support I live in Georgia and in Georgia we are a red state I'm not about taking anybody's anything by force I'm not then, about then why did you support a law that says that the state shall seize and take possession of these guns what I support is saving lives. And what saving lives is, is ban on assault rifles. These okay. kids are out here and they are stating that we need to put a okay. ban on assault rifles. Okay, I understand. Enough, I mean, I think, I think we both agree. We're both against yeah. killing, yeah. of course. Yeah. I just have real concerns about the effect of the law that you supported, but you don't want to address those. Let me ask you this question then. The overwhelming majority of gun deaths in this country are caused by handguns, not by so-called assault rifles. It's a tiny percentage. So why are we banning the gun that causes a small percentage of killings, but leaving the guns that cause the majority legal? Why does that make you sense? You may, and I understand what you're saying, you may say that it's a small percentage, but well, it when it's your percentage. brother or when it's your well, sister I'm not, I'm not being, being assaulted okay, by assault right. rifle, it's not a small percentage. But what about, what about the brothers and sisters? Any percentage assault but, rifle is but, not a small percentage. Okay, and when it comes to your family member being, no, 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 you don't, 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 don't demagogue it with me. I'm, I'm not, not demagoguing it. I'm not in any way downplaying the significance of anyone. No, hold on. I'm not downplaying the significance of anyone's death. Of course. I'm as concerned as you are. I'm just wondering why, since assault rifles, relatively speaking, cause few deaths, handguns cause the overwhelming majority of deaths, why are you not calling for banning handguns and seizing and taking possession of handguns? I, I, I don't know why, if you care so much about gun violence. But I would ask you the same question. Would you call for a, a ban on handguns? No, you wouldn't. So that's not the question because at hand. Because guns the question don't at hand cause is a ban killings. on assault rifles. People have a gun as a tool. Fewer American households have guns 
than they did 40 years ago, and yet the so incidence of mass shootings is So why can we not put a ban on assault rifles? That's the question. Why not? Well, because you have over 100 million semi-automatic weapons in the United States right now. What do you do with those? Do you, you know go what? to people's you homes and take them? them? That's to a the real military. question. If people want to have assault rifles, join the military. Defend but what if your they don't want to give up their guns? The military. Are, look, that I, is why I'm we not need a child, assault rifles okay? I'm to an defend adult. our so, country, I, I, not to okay. shoot our kids in America. That is what is happening. Okay. That is what happened I at Portland. I'm that trying is to why ask you adult questions. You can give up if you want. Right. Okay.